Hey everyone, Tim Streifler here with Divi Life and we are back with another tutorial for Divi Overlays. And in this tutorial, we're gonna show you how to set click triggers manually using the CSS selector string feature that is new in version 2.0 of Divi Overlays. And so essentially what that allows you to do is it allows you to input your own CSS string here on the overlay edit screen to manually set your trigger. So if you've been using Divi Overlays, you know that the easiest way to set a click trigger is to take the unique CSS ID and just add it to your Divi module in the advanced tab and just paste it right there. However, you can't do that with certain modules that have a lot of different things going on. For example, the full width header module is this entire section here with the text, with the multiple buttons. And so if you just add your CSS ID or I'm, yeah, the C, unique CSS ID for the overlay to here, then that's going to make this entire area clickable to trigger the overlay. And in some cases, you might want that, but in a lot of cases, you only want it to be specific buttons. Additionally, you want to be able to have two buttons trigger two different overlays. And so the way that we do that is using the CSS selector trigger input field here on the overlay edit screen and it lets you put in a string to individually target one of the buttons or if you're doing uh, for example uh, the Divi slider module you want each individual slide the button and only the button to trigger a different overlay for each slide well you can do that using the CSS selector string input field uh, pricing tables is another one you have you know uh, three or four columns in the pricing table you want to be able for each button to trigger a different overlay. And so you can do that again using the CSS selector uh, input field. And so uh, we're gonna be going through the tutorial here. So if you're watching this on YouTube, follow the link over to this page here. And this is what we're going through here in the video. And uh, also this page is really important because we have some uh, pre-made, or I should say some shortcuts um, for the different modules. So here's the full width header module the button one button two and we're, we're going to show you how, how to add that now so uh the here's essentially a breakdown of the steps the first step is to add a unique id to the module where you want to set a click trigger so for example we're going to be in this video showing you the full width header and so step one is to add a unique id to this full width header here which is on our page here's a full width header we're going to be adding a unique ID here and I'm going to explain that more in a second let's go back here step two is to copy the CSS class of the element that you want to trigger and so basic uh, web development HTML CSS um, there's a way to essentially target every element on this page individually for at least for a, a well-coded theme such as Divi Divi lets you individually target every aspect of this theme. And so we're gonna be able to decide exactly what we wanna target. Um, so for example, button one or button two. Um, and so we need to be able to, to find that. I'm gonna show you how to find that class. And then uh, last is you put your custom ID from step one with the CSS class from step two, and you add it to the CSS selector trigger field which is here. And uh, so going back to step one here, adding the unique ID to the module, uh, the reason why you wanna do that is to individually target just this full width header module. So say for example, we set up a click trigger just for button one to uh, open up the overlay for a gallery, right? And you want it to just happen on this button here. Well, if you have another page that also has a full width header and also has a button. Well, you don't want that necessarily that gallery to open up again. For that, on that page, you might want it to open up a different overlay. And so we want to set a unique CSS ID for this full width header so that we can in individually target button one just on this exact full width header here. And so that's why it's important to do that. And even if you don't plan on having another full width header, it's just best practice to do that. So later down the road, if you add another page, forgetting about this 
and uh, you add another button, you don't want it to randomly start triggering the overlay and not knowing what's happening. And so um, that's why it's definitely recommended, although not required. Uh, so that is step one. So we're gonna go ahead and do that here. And so this is right here, this is the page that we're editing. So this is this page here that I have open in another tab. This is the full width header that we wanna add the button trigger to. And so I'm gonna go to the advanced tab and add the CSS ID. And so you can see here, I mean, you can make this whatever you want, but this is just the one we're using for the example, which is custom-overlay-trigger. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the CSS ID field. Now add it just like that. Don't add the ID symbol here. Uh, Divi does that automatically, so don't add it there. Hit save, make sure you update the page and we're good. So that step one is just defining what full width header we want to uh, we, we want to target. And, and the same goes if you're if you're doing this on a uh, for a pricing table or for a slider or, or whatever. Uh, you're going to add it to the module itself, and that's going to separate it from the rest, so you don't start uh, opening overlays on on different modules throughout the site. Okay, so that is step one. So following along here in our guide already did this. Step two is copying the CSS class for the element that we want to set as the trigger. Now I have this text here that saying that we have shortcuts for all the most common modules and we'll be adding to it uh, as we, we see fit. So uh, you can potentially skip this step here, um, but I'm, I'm gonna show it in the video just so if, if we don't have a module on here that you need to um, target on a more granular level than the CSS ID field that the module provides lets you do. Um, then you're gonna wanna watch this part of the video to, to figure it out. Also, even if, uh, um, say you're using a, a plugin um, and then it doesn't allow you to add a CSS ID field like you would setting up a normal click trigger, well then you're gonna wanna use this method. So I'm gonna show you how to do that here. So um, we're gonna go ahead and right click or control click, depending on if you're a Mac or a PC, and we're gonna select that inspect from the menu there and that's gonna pop open the inspector. Now, uh, we're using Google Chrome, and that's what I feel is the, the best uh, developer tools. Other people would argue Firefox is better. Pretty much every uh, one of the major browsers has some developer tools built in. Uh, Safari, you actually have to turn it on, and I believe it's advanced settings, but um, we're gonna be showing this to you in, uh, in Chrome. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that one more time. So I, here's my button one, I'm gonna right click, hit inspect, I'm actually doing a two finger tap on my trackpad, but um, you get the idea. And so here it's highlighted in the HTML, this is the element on the page. You can kind of see it changing over here as I'm kind of going through the different parts of the page. So this is what we want to target. And so we're gonna copy the last class. You can uh, copy the additional classes too, um, but you only really need the last one here. That's the, the unique part of uh, the, the button where it says ET underscore PB underscore button underscore one. So that's button one. So we're just gonna copy that. And we're gonna head over to, uh, actually it's usually helpful if you just copy it, put it aside for a second. And so, um, now this is a link though, so what we need to do is we, we can't just paste that in. First of all, we have to add the class, but then before that it's a link, so we're gonna add A, which is HTML for a link. Um, and so that's essentially going to let us target button one. Uh, and so if we paste this into here, it's going to uh, make it so this button here triggers the overlay, and that's great. But we wanna add the CSS uh, ID that we added to here in front of it so that we don't target other button ones and other full width headers different places on the site. Um, but one thing I wanna show you here to give you a clue, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the inspector again, is you'll notice if I click on the arrow here it'll let me uh, select different parts of the page. You can see here it has highlighted where it right above my mouse, I can't move my mouse to point to it because it goes away, but you'll see it says a dot et underscore pb underscore more. Um, that's essentially, it's pointing out, this is what you're, you're pointing at, that, that's the CSS string 
uh, for that element on the page. And so you could uh, kind of see that and, and see how it's supposed to look. Uh, we're getting rid of that middle chunk because we don't need those additional classes and we just want to make it as simple as possible. We just need that last class at the end where it says uh, dot et underscore pb underscore button underscore one. We're getting rid of the rest, but we are keeping the A for the, the anchor link, uh, the, the link there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go over here and I'm going to uh, copy the class that I added to here. I have it other places. I just want to show you where I'm getting this. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go ahead and add it to my note here. And I'm going to put a space and then I'm going to add the hashtag, pound sign, number sign, whatever you want to call it in front of it to signify that's an ID. The dot here signifies that it's a class. And now this right here is what we're going to paste into the CSS selector trigger and we're going to hit update and if you didn't uh, save your page after adding your custom CSS ID to the module then go ahead and click update there as well now one thing worth noting so you know I have this here and I added my custom trigger um, so we have on this page some shortcuts at the bottom you can see so here's the full width header module and, and here's that uh, the um, full width header button one. Well, you can go ahead and just copy that. And actually, I'm going to show you. You can copy button two and just replace the second half, keeping your unique ID there. And then you can just target uh, different buttons using that, or you can uh, use the shortcuts down here. And we'll talk about that more in a second. Um, so, saved our overlay, saved our page. Now I'm going to refresh this page here. And uh, let me just get rid of my inspector. There it is, close that, okay. And so if we set it up right for button one, this should trigger the overlay. I click it, there you see it does. That's <clears throat> the overlay that we had set, overlay test two. I meant to do test one with button one, test two with button two, but I got it swapped, but that's okay. So this one we haven't done yet. So I'm clicking this, nothing's happening. That one opens the overlay. So I'm gonna show you again, we're gonna go over to test one here. We have nothing here. I'm gonna go scroll down to the shortcuts, full width header module, copy this for button two. Go back to my notepad here. I already did this. I'm gonna replace the second half, leaving my custom CSS ID, copy that, go back over to the overlay edit screen, paste it in the CSS selector trigger input field, click update, and so this is the test one overlay. I'm gonna refresh my page here on the front end. Now this one we already know that triggers overlay test two, and this one, overlay test one, boom. So now this is the header module and these are two different buttons and we're able to target the buttons setting up a different setting a different trigger or a di different overlay for each button here and so that is uh, how you do it for the full width header and it's going to be essentially the same steps for different modules here and so you can see here we have some shortcuts we'll be adding more so the pricing tables module same thing you're going to copy what's here and you're going to add it or replace the full width header leaving your custom ID but remember you gotta you gotta add this to your pricing table so on your page here so say I go and and add a uh, a pricing table where's my pricing table right so I need to go to the advanced tab and add my custom overlay trigger ID there so that I could target just this pricing table in case I have pricing tables on other pages. Um, so that's important. So those are the, the steps for setting up the, uh, setting up click triggers on 
uh, modules that have multiple elements to it and you don't want the whole module to trigger the overlay so you don't want to use the the original method of setting click triggers so this allows you to, uh, more control for setting uh, different tr uh, overlays for the different buttons in the full width header the uh, slider module uh, we have the shortcuts for the slider module as well so here we have two examples for slide uh, one for slide two and then you get the idea you could do the, the rest for, for multiple slides if you have more than two slides so um, that that that's the steps if you have any questions don't do not hesitate to open up a support ticket on our support page and uh, we will go ahead and uh, help you out with that if you're using if you're trying to target a different part of the page that's not a Divi module, maybe it's a custom plugin or, or whatever, uh, we'll be more than happy to help you find the, the CSS string that you need to add to your overlay edit screen in order to, to set that click trigger. So uh, again, thanks for watching and we'll, we'll see you on the next tutorial.